what we see here is we have the seismogram at the top and the tide gauge data at the bottom. Here comes the earthquake. It lasts for a couple of minutes. And notice that the tide gauge also shows vibrations while that is happening. And the earthquake is over. Both the land and seabed around Kaikoura has been lifted up in this event. So to the tide gauge that appears initially is no change in level, but then the water level starts to drop. Now here we come with the first um, aftershocks from the earthquake. At this stage, the water level Kaikoura is steadily dropping, although superimposed on that are, are other kinds of oscillations. Now the water level steadily drops over the space of about 25 minutes to, a, to its lowest point. So here this is about two and a half meters, goes down about two and a half meters below the original level as measured by the tide gauge. And of course, suddenly seeing this drop on the tide gauge is a classic signal or warning signal for a tsunami. So that's, that's a really uh, key observation. Okay, another aftershock here. Water level is now rising again. I have to bear in mind that the tide gauge and the land it's attached to have both risen about a meter here. So when it appears to have gone back to uh, a normal level, it's actually um, a meter higher when looked at from far away. Okay, now we're coming into the peak of the wave, which is about 40 minutes or so after the earthquake. So as measured by the tide gauge, it's about a meter and a half above what would be its normal level at this time. Though from far away, if you bear in mind that the tide gauge has been raised a meter, then you could say that the water level is two and a half meters, which is a peak of two and a half meters above the normal level. Here's another aftershock, and it will continue for a long time, and the water level will also continue to oscillate up and down for um, several hours.